Today we're going to look at problems dealing with uh, population genetics. And so population genetics was an area of work that was first uh, laid out by the two guys, Hardy and Weinberg. They were building on Mendel's work where they were, Mendel was looking at how the making predictions of how given any two set of parents, what's the, how are those traits being inherited from one generation to the next. And Hardy and Weinberg built on that, that general premise that Mendel laid out in terms of how traits are inherited and apply those principles to a whole population. So where two sets of parents, say two heterozygous sets of parents, they have an equal probability of passing on, say, a dominant allele versus a recessive allele. Each allele has a 50-50 probability of being passed on from each parent. And that's how we can determine the probability of any particular offspring. And so Hardy-Weinberg reasoned that we can use that same general principle and apply it to a population, but within a population, we may not have a 50-50 makeup of the alleles in the population, that there may be one allele in more abundance than other alleles. And so we can use the same rationale and the same math principles that were used in Mendel, but we just have to account for that there could be differences in the allelic makeup and that's one allele may be in greater abundance than another. It's also possible that they, the alleles may be in equal abundance. But for their mathematical model, they took some general assumptions about the population and the assumptions that they made about their population to, to have their model work was that the populations are infinitely large or really, really large that the populations are also randomly mating. And what that means is that all, every individual within the population is equally likely to mate and everybody in the population is going to mate. That there is no migration out of the population. If you have individuals leave the population, they would take their alleles with you, which would change the allelic makeup of the population. And so as long as there's no migration, then the model works, okay? There's no mutation because having genes mute, mutate into different allelic variants also would change the allelic makeup of the population. And the last assumption that they make about their population is that it's uh, that there's no natural selection, that each allele has, in, has no advantage over the other allele and so and doesn't confer any fitness advantage. Now, if a population meets all of these criteria for any given set of genes, okay, then that population is said to be in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. And what that means is from one generation to the next, the allelic makeup and the genotypic makeup, meaning the relative number of dominant alleles versus the relative number of recessive alleles, will stay the same from one generation to the next. Likewise, the relative number of different genotypes will stay the same from one generation to the next. So, so the number of homozygotes, uh, homozygote dominants, heterozygote dom uh, recess heterozygotes, homozygote recessives from one generation to the next, that relative proportion will stay constant. Now, obviously this doesn't necessarily apply to all populations, but it's a useful framework for us to kind of start describing the population, uh, describing a population in terms of its genetic makeup of the relative abundance of, of any given allele or the relative abundance of particular genotypes. Useful for the usefulness of this is is being able to make some predictions because if you're able to say observe the number of individuals that have a recessive disorder, well that will could be indicative of the relative abundance of that recessive disorder's allele, and while we can't distinguish the homozygote dominance from the heterozygotes, they're phenotypically normal. Given the abundance of the recessive disorder individuals that are homozygote recessive, we perhaps can make some predictions about what's how abundant are the heterozygotes within the population. If we know that, we can maybe make some predictions about what's the likelihood of any two individuals having a child with that particular disorder. Okay, so that's the rationale of why this stuff can become useful. Now, the two types of problems we're going to really look at are are kind of two different things. One is what I just described is if a population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, you can use Hardy-Weinberg's equation, which is the mathematical model, to make predictions about the population. Given any one piece of information, you can derive all of the other pieces of information. Likewise, or the other type of problem that we're going to actually work through here is 
if we don't know if a population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, we can test to see if that population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. And so for that, what we're going to do is we're going to have a population that we will be able to observe and presumably deduce or actually see how many homozygote dominance we have, how many heterozygotes we have, and how many homozygote recessives we have. From that, what we can do is we can figure out the relative abundance of dominant alleles versus recessive alleles. Okay. Once we know that, we can also, from that information, deduce or calculate what that population's actual observed genotypic frequencies are. So if we have 100 individuals and there are 25 homozygote dominants, well, that means 25% of the population are homozygote dominant. That's what we mean by frequency. So that would be our observed frequency. Now, those allelic frequencies would, if this population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, would be able to predict the fact that that population has 25% homozygote recessives. Now, if we calculate allelic frequencies and we put them into Hardy-Weinberg's equation and the numbers we get in terms of what we would expect for homozygote recessives or for heterozygotes or homozygote dominance, if, we, if that expectation is not what we're actually observing, then we would say the population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. If the expectation or the numbers that we get out of the equation actually match what we see in the actual population, our observed genotypic frequencies, then we say, yes, that population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So those are the two general types of problems we're going to look at. Okay, so for, let's, for, to start with, let's first look at what, remind ourselves what the equations are, okay, and then we'll, we'll work through the problems of how to actually use them. So remember that the frequency of the dominant allele is going to be key. Now, the dominant versus recessive, it's relative or arbitrary. We really could flip this any different way. It doesn't really matter, okay? For the sakes of, of just simplicity of discussing about it, we're going to just say the frequency of the dominant allele is P and that the frequency of the recessive allele is Q, okay? So what that means is the frequency or of all of the alleles for the gene A, of all of the alleles, the frequency of the little a, or Q, is the proportion of it. It it's, would be, um, so we would have the frequency of little a over n alleles, okay? However many alleles we have. Okay, that's kind of how we're going to calculate it. All right, so now what that means is if the frequency of the dominant alleles plus the frequency of the recessive alleles is going to be equal to 1. Okay, because what, what that means is the frequency of all of the allele, the, the frequency of the part of, that are, of the alleles that are dominant versus the part of the alleles that are recessive equals all of the alleles. Similarly, we can work out frequencies of genotypes using this information, much like we would do with a Punnett square. So the probability, uh, P squared, is what we're going to call the frequency of a homozygote dominant. Q squared is the frequency of a homozygote recessive. And 2PQ is going to be the frequency of our heterozygotes. So Hardy-Weinberg's equation is P squared plus Q squared plus 2PQ, which I wrote this actually a little bit backwards, because it usually goes, it's the same, it's math, and you can flip it around any way, but it's usually P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. And so what that says is P squared, it's homozygote dominance, frequency of the 2PQ is the frequency of the homozygote, is the frequency of the homozygote recessives, and Q squared is the frequency of the homozygote dominance. The number of our homozygote dominance plus the number of our heterozygotes, plus the number of our homozygote recessives equals all of the genotypes that we have. Okay, so these are the equations that we have. We have. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually calculate, for the, we can either calculate different genotypic frequencies if the population is in higher equilibrium, or we can test 
to see if a population is in a hardy Weinberg equilibrium. So for this first problem, what we're looking at is we're told that a population is in hardy Weinberg equilibrium and that the frequency of the homozygote recessive is 0.16. So now the question is asking, what is the frequency of the dominant allele? Now, we're told that this population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. That's what it means as, as a Hardy-Weinberg population. It means that that population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. And so what, that, what we want to do is we want to say, all right, well, if this is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, what piece of information do we have? The piece of information that we have is our homozygote recessives. So homozygote recessives is Q squared. Okay, And so if we make our if we make our equation where we say q squared is equal to 0 0.16 well we can solve for q we can say square root of q is 0 0.4 and so now because we're told that this population is in hardy weinberg equilibrium we can use this information to derive any other numbers that we want. So what we're looking for is the frequency of our dominant allele. Okay. So the frequency of the dominant allele, well, the frequency of the dominant allele is P. P plus Q equals 1. So if I have P plus 0 0.4 is equal to 1, well, if I subtract 0 0.4, from both sides, I will get p equals 0 0.6. There are my, there's the frequency of the dominant allele. Okay, so given one piece of information, we can predict any other. Now we'd be able to, is, with this particular example, if you wanted to then say, what are the frequency of heterozygotes? Well, you'd go 2 times 0 0.6 times, you'd do 2, 2 pq, 2 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.4. Okay. So now the next question is saying, okay, consider this allele A. Okay, this is just a totally new question, new population. Okay, here we have, considering allele A, show that the following population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. All right, to do that, what we want to do is... Uh, so to do that, we will, to demonstrate that this population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, we need to calculate the allelic frequencies for this population. Okay. We need to calculate the genotypic frequencies for this population. And then we need to use the allelic frequencies, <coughs> excuse me, the P and the Q, put them into Hardy-Weinberg's equation. And if the numbers we get out of Hardy-Weinberg's equation match the frequencies of our individuals, well then that population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Okay, and so, <clears throat> so to do that, the first step is to determine the our allelic frequencies. So to, to calculate our allelic frequencies, let's first calculate the frequency of the dominant allele, or the big A. Okay, so the frequency, oops, The frequency of the big A is going to be equal to P. It's equal to P, which is equal to the total number of big A's that we have divided by the total number of alleles. Okay, so if we have, if we add this up, we have 100 individuals. Okay, which means that we have 200 alleles. Okay. That's one thing we need to know. So what that means, we're going to take the total number of big A and divide it by 200 because we're looking at, of those 200 alleles, how many of them are dominant A. Okay. So these 25 individuals that we have right here, these 25 individuals, they each have two big A's. So we're going to say 2 times 25 but those aren't all the big A's because these 50 individuals, they each have one. So we need to add 50. So that gives us 2 times 25 is 50 plus another 50 equals 100 divided by 200 gives us 0 0.5. So P is 0 0.5 or 5 or 0.5. 
So now we can do just like what we did up above. If P plus Q is equal to zero, or P plus Q is equal to one, then 0 0.5 plus Q is equal to one. We subtract 0 0.5 and subtract 0 0.5, and then we will get Q is equal to 0 0.5. So now, two different things we need to do. One, let's calculate our genotypic frequencies for this particular population. So this is easy to do because of the math we have here. We have 100 individuals, and so what proportion of the individuals are homozygote dominance? Well, we're going to just divide 25 individuals by 100 is going to be 0 0.25 is equal to p squared. Okay. That's if this population, that's, that is, that is our homozygote dominance. Okay. This is, we're actually, it's not P squared yet because we haven't actually shown that this population is hydro weinberg equilibrium. And so this is going to be the equal to the frequency of big A, big A. And these are going to be our observed genotypic frequencies okay. and so same thing here we're going to go 50 divided by 100 gives us 0 0.50 is the observed frequencies of our heterozygotes and then this one here is 25 divided by 100 it's going to be 0 0.25 is the our observed frequencies of our homozygote recessives. Right. So now these are our observed frequencies. So now what we want to do is we want to calculate our predicted or our expected frequencies, which means we're going to take our allelic frequencies that we have here and we're going to put them into the Hardy-Weinberg equation and see what we get. Okay. So if we take p squared we're going to take 0 0.5 squared, so that's going to be 0 0.25. 2pq is equal to, we're going to take 2 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 equals 0 0.50. And q squared is equal to 0 0.5 squared, which equals 0 0.25. One common mistake that people make is they get this far. They, they, they don't do this part up here where they're calculating the observed frequencies. They get this far and they add up 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 0.25 equals 1 and say, yes, this population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. The way this math works is that this should always add up to 1 if you do your math right. That's just you're doing taking part of the whole, you're adding up all your parts, you should get the whole. The one is the whole. Okay. What you're doing now, the next step is to compare. These are our expected or predicted genotypic frequencies. And now the question is, is do they match the ones up above? And so as you can see, P squared, 0.25, frequency of big A, 0.25, that matches. 0 0.50, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, we can say yes. This is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, okay, because those numbers match. All right, so now um, I think I will we'll do a different, uh, a second video that uh, for the next worksheet so that we make them shorter. Um, so this is working for you give me a little feedback with a thumbs up or something and so i know this is actually worth me spending the time have a great day